September month again. When we find out my very ambitious list of TBR hopefuls. <laughs> Hello, welcome or welcome back to the channel. I am Neva and this is Reading with Neva, where we talk all things lifestyle, books, and whatever else I feel like talking about. So today we are doing my August hopefuls for my TBR. So I am currently putting my TBR game on hold. Um, for anyone who is like an OG to my channel, I've been playing Stars Hollow TBR for the last like year, but I am redoing it. It's going to be a whole new game. It's no longer going to be Stars Hollow TBR um, for reasons, but I have a new game being worked out but it probably will not be premiered until October so from now until my new game is um announced I will be doing hopefuls for the month instead so we have I believe I have 23 hopefuls on here but I could be wrong I don't know I will be doing a mix of holding up my iPad with book covers and also holding up physical books I do have four of my hopefuls that are physical books that I do actually like physically own the rest of them are books that are either from the library or that I only own via Kindle for anyone who does not know I am a Kindle reader uh pretty much 100% I don't know what is on my sweater but that's interesting it's the same it's fine um but I and pretty much exclusively a Kindle reader. However, I do own quite a few physical books because I collect books. People gift them to me. I don't buy a lot of books. Most of my physical books are gifted, but yes, I do pretty much only read on good old Harley the Kindle. So let's go ahead and talk about the 23 books that I have on my hopefuls TBR. So I'm going to start with the physical books and I'm going to jump through them here and um as I tell you about them I'm going to check them off I have my computer down here where you can't see it that has the full list and as I talk about each of the books I will check it off so that I know that I've already talked about it so the first one that we're going to talk about is Hopeless by Colleen Hoover so I'm not going to talk a lot about I didn't I'm not going to say that I failed last month I did technically fail but because we're doing TBR hopefuls from now until my new game is premiered I'm not taking any punishments or anything like that because these are just hopefuls so hopeless was a book that the book besties picked so the book besties are crystal from bomb book reviews rainy from rainy blue reads Kelsey from <laughs> reads with Kels and Brittany from Brittany Loves Reading. Those are my four book besties. I, we love them. So they picked this book. I had them vote between this book and one other book. I think it was slammed also by Colleen Hoover. I don't remember. This is part of a Colleen Hoover vlog that I'm currently working on. It's been taking me way too long because I haven't just been binging Colleen Hoover. It's not really the thing I want to do. I did start this. I'm on page 54. I started this Mm, from the time that I'm filming this probably like a like I, I started this like a week ago so I started this like the the weekend that I that we took Ari to my grandma's house because I read a little bit well 54 pages of it in the car on my Kindle so this is Hopeless by Colleen Hoover this is a contemporary book um I suppose you could say it's romance it's categorized as romance but isn't all Colleen Hoover. So we are following ba, 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 Sky and Dean. They, or Holder. Dean is mostly called Holder throughout this book, even by Sky. So Sky is a senior in high school who is relatively sheltered. Her mom doesn't allow her to like eat junk food. Well, she does eat junk food, but she doesn't like have, um, TV or like access to social media and then and she and she's been homeschooled a big 
portion of her life but in her senior year she decides that she wants to go to regular school and in doing that she meets Dean Holder who is your classic like bad boy character he's also a senior in high school it's their story so that's what this is like I said I'm not very far into this so I can't really tell you anything about this book at all but I'm 54% in and if you want my full and unadulterated thoughts on this book there will be a Colleen Hoover vlog going up hopefully soon okay so that's the first one the next one that I have is Rootless by Crystal Zara Apaya Apia I'm not sure Apaya this is by a black author um and this is about a marriage in crisis I really do want to read my book of the month books I currently am not subscribed to book of the month anymore because I just keep getting them and then not reading them and that's very annoying for me so this is a book of the month book about a marriage in crisis that's really all that I know about this book other than it is also written by a black woman so hoping to get to this this month the next one that I have is These Violent Delights by Chloe Gong. Now, I probably will not be talking about this very month, much throughout the month, unlike some of these other books, because this book is also part of a vlog. My sibling, Erwin, picked this book in May, I think. Um, I had both my sibling, Erwin, and my sister, Anna, came to visit us, and when they came to visit us, I had each of them pick, I believe it was like five books, um, and I haven't started those vlogs yet, so this is my excuse to do that. So this month I do want to pick up These Violent Delights since they picked this one for their vlog, and then I can start their vlog. So I probably won't talk about this super a lot this month. Um, I don't do wrap-ups anymore because they don't bring me joy, so I won't talk about them in a wrap-up, but they may make appearances in weekly vlogs this month. Um, because I don't have a hard and fast TBR for the amazing readathon because there's no way to really have that since we get uh prompts every like I think she said two to three days um so I'm hoping that this will work for that but if it doesn't it does re work for another readathon which is a full moon readathon I'll there will be another video probably after this one that covers all of my full moon readathon books that I'll be reading but this book I want to read it so that I can start that Erwin picks my reads vlog and the last physical book that I'm hoping to get to this month is Priory of the Orange Tree I did this is a big book but I did technically read this already it would be a reread for me so the reason I want to reread is because I want to annotate for that purpose and then I will move on eventually to um a day of fallen something a day of fallen night <laughs> is what Ari said and she actually may be right because she hears me talk about my books all the time a day of fallen night Thank you, Ari. So we have Prior of the Orange Tree, which is the first book, and then A Day of Fallen Night. As I was just been reminded by Ari, thank God for her, um, which is the prequel to, to Prior of the Orange Tree, but comes, you're supposed to read it like after, if that makes sense. So that's what we have here. Again, this is a reread for me because I want to annotate. So I will be reading this on my Kindle. I'm not going to read this this way. But the first time that I read this, I was trying to immerse and read it. Then I ended up leaving my physical copy at my best friend's house. So I had to just do it with audio. And I don't really remember a ton from this book. So we'll be doing that. All right, now moving on to my Kindle. We are going to go through all of the books. Actually, we have more than 23 because my kindle itself has 23 so now obviously if these are all of the books that i just mentioned i also have as ebooks so it may actually only be 23 i don't i don't even know but obviously we've already talked about the book as a physical book i'm not going to revisit it but we are going to move on to all of the books that i have on my kindle And yes, so basically how this is going to work because I don't wanna to have to superimpose all the pictures is I'm just gonna hold my Kindle up with the covers 
and that's how we're going to do it so the first one that i have is practical magic by alice hoffman this is the book that the movie was based on so if you saw the movie that came out i think it came out in like late 90s or the early thousands but it starred sandra bullock and nicole kidman this is a book about two sisters who are witches and they go to live with their aunts and learn how to use their magic and all of that but unfortunately this family has a curse which is that um any man that they fall in love with ends up dying so that is what this book is about is that i'm trying to break that curse i personally love the movie i read the book in 2020 for the first time i actually didn't even know that this was a book until 2020 so i read it in 2020 absolutely loved it and i really want to reread it so that is the first one that we have the next one that we have is actually the sequel to practical magic which is the rules of magic also by alice hoffman i don't really know anything about this one i just know that this comes after practical magic i don't remember if this is like a prequel technically that comes after or if this is an actual like sequel so but this is the next book in that series so i want to read both of those the next one that i have is horror store by grady hendrix this is like a ikea-esque horror book this is supposed to be pretty fun my friend Brittany, i think said that she liked it i did grab this from the library i if i really like this one though i will be buying it as a physical copy because it is shaped just like this like the way that the book cover looks is shaped like an ikea catalog and i just think that that's so fun but this is a short one it's only like less than 200 pages i think it's 160 something pages um 167 is what's coming to me and that might be right but this is very short and it's very sweet and i'm hoping to get through it quickly but i want to have fun with it it seems like a fun time the next one that i have is actually a buddy read that i will be reading with my friend Brittany and also my friend from Brittany Loves Reading and my friend Margaret from The Word Nerd and that is Little Thieves. This is one of Margaret's favorite books. I know that for a fact. She talks about it all of the time. So because of Margaret I bought this one and the book that subsequently comes after it and I want to read this book and look how pretty the cover is because like I want to read this and love it so that I can buy this physically it's just such a pretty cover in my opinion so little thieves the next book that I have that I need I've already started this but I need to finish this month is a court of thorns and roses i am buddy reading this with my friends brooklyn from brooklyn reads and rainy from rainy loves reading i'm sure that at this point both of them are much further in this than i am this is technically a reread for me so that i can move on to a court of mist and fury but originally i was just going to move forward to a court of mist and fury and then i posted asking if i should or not and brooklyn and rainy both said that they wanted to read it with me so we're doing a buddy read so that's the next one. The next one that I have for the month is This is Where We Talk Things Out by Caitlin Marcier, Marsu. I'm not sure. But this is a book that was picked by Rye for her 20 for her vlog. So I am still doing my reading my friends' favorite books series however i've decided to throw in challenges so rise is seeing how many of her books i can read in 24 hours i'm still working on this vlog as i'm filming this okay i finished one book i'm almost done with the second but it's just taking a long time i think as i'm filming this i'm only like nine or nine and a half hours into the timer and that's perfectly fine i'm going to take my time with it and let it go as long as it needs to but this is a pretty short uh, novel novella it's only it's less than 200 pages and this is one of the ones that she picked for me to read I don't know anything about this one I think it's horror but I'm not sure to be honest like I don't even know that much so this is the next one 
The next one that I have for this hopefuls is the Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires. This is a reread for me. However, um, as you'll see in a, in another video, this is for a full moon readathon. If it's one of those prompts, so I'm going to be reading this one. I cannot wait. I'm so excited. I read this last year and I absolutely loved it. But I listened to the audiobook. It was two ninety nine on Amazon. We love a deal. So I went ahead and I grabbed this off of Amazon for $2.99, which like, can you beat that? No, you can't. So that I can annotate and just like enjoy reading it with my eyes. I cannot wait. I'm so excited for this one. So this is actually my second Grady Hendrix of the month. Clearly we're into spooky season. August for me is the beginning of fall. So I'm in the vibe at this point. The next one I have is Carrie Soto is Back by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I really, really need to get this book read, y'all. Like, I need to get it read. I've been really just, like, pussyfooting around with this one. But I have read all of the other books that fall into this universe. So the other books that fall into this universe are Daisy Jones and the Six, Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, and Malibu Rising. So this is the last one that I need to read. And because I've read Malibu Rising, I know how this book ties in and I'm really excited to read this. I know that this is very tennis heavy however a little fun fact about me I played tennis through middle and high school. I absolutely love the sport so I'm hoping to love this book. The next one I have is The Golden Hour. I've literally had this book since 2020 on my Kindle. I bought it for a book club that I was part of in 2020 and at that time I was just getting back into reading and I could not vibe with this book. This is historical fiction but I'm really trying to get into historical fiction and figure out what it is that I like when it comes to historical fiction because I've never been a historical fiction reader. So I'm hoping to read this and love it. I think the last like historical fiction books I can think of that I read were in like middle school and high school there were these like diary books that were really popular. I remember reading one that was like Anastasia's diary and those were really popular at the time. I'm probably aging myself. That's fine. But as of right now, um, I'm not a historical fiction reader. So I'm hoping that because this is on my Kindle, I can get into this and I can love it. The next book that I have is The Help by Catherine Stockett. This is also a reread. This is just like the month of rereads for me. Most of this is because of the Amazing Readathon. So I grabbed a bunch of yellow books off my Kindle. Most of them I've read at some point. But this book I probably haven't read in 10 years, but I absolutely love it. And it's one of my favorite movies. This is technically historical fiction, <laughs> because but, it, but I love it. So this is about um, black women or the help and I believe it takes place in the 50s so when black women were still housemaids and things like that for white people um, white households and that's what this book is about I also love this book is one of my favorite books of all time cannot wait to reread it The next book that I have is The Hawthorne Legacy. This is the sequel to The Inheritance Games. So I read The Inheritance Games in July and we all, a bunch of us decided that we really wanted to continue this series. I actually read The Inheritance Games for B and K Book Club, which is run by my friends Brittany from Brittany Ellis Reading and Kelsey from Kels Read, no, Reads with Kels. <laughs> gotcha so we a bunch of us decided that we wanted to continue the series so we are moving on to the Hawthorne legacy I'm about to just buy these books I need to just buy the entire series but yes the Hawthorne legacy I can't really tell you anything about this book but I will give you a synopsis of the inheritance games since that's the first book in the series which this was gifted to me by my dear friend Brittany and I'm so glad that she did because this is one of my favorite YA books at this point. Like, it's just so good. I give it five stars. It's not a six star book, but I give it five stars. So The Inheritance Games is about Avery, who is a poor 
basically an orphan like her dad is technically still alive but her mom passes away and she moves in with her sister who adopts her and becomes her legal guardian so that happens and avery receives word that she has been left an inheritance by a man she does not know and this entire book is her and the grandsons of this man trying to figure out why she's been left his entire estate while they have been left with really nothing so that is what this is it is a thriller slash it's like a thriller but it also has like riddles and puzzles with it i don't know it's just such a fun book it was such a fun read for me so that's what we're moving on to for the next one is the hawthorne legacy the next book that i have is caraval by stephanie garber i know that she also wrote the once upon a broken heart series but i've been told that you by people that have read both series that are big stephanie garber fans that you should start with the caraval series so that's what i'm doing i don't know anything about this i know that it's like a like a game i think it's like similar vein to the inheritance games but the little blurb says, remember, it's only a game. I know nothing about this. I think it's fantasy. I think it has to do with a carnival. And that's really all that I know. I go into everything blind. So. You're welcome. The next book I have is... The next book I have is The Queen's Rising by Rebecca Ross. So in July, for anyone who's been on sprints in July, I read Divine Rivals by Rebecca Ross. Absolutely loved it. Best book of the year for me so far. And it is six stars. It literally knocked Magnolia Parks and Long Live the Pumpkin Queen out of the running as my best books of the year. So I am so excited to read Rebecca Ross's backlist. So Rebecca Ross appears to be the queen of duologies which we love on this channel okay because i am the queen of starting series and never finishing them but duologies i'm a hoe for a duology because it's easy for me to read one or two books even two to three books like trilogies and duologies that's what i need but i keep picking up series of books that have five to twelve books in them and never knowing when I'll finish them. So we love this. I don't know anything about this. I believe it's fantasy because Queens, but that's all I know. So The Queens Rising, I'm very excited for this one, even though I know nothing about it. So yay for Rebecca Ross. The next book that I have is Fear the Flames by Olivia Rose Darling. This is actually a book that I had wanted to read in my Jan vlog. However, I only did my Jan reading vlog for a week. At some point I may do another one because there were actually a few other books that I wanted to read. So I may start another reading like Jan vlog just so that I can read these because there were like probably eight or nine books that I actually wanted to read but I could only fit so many into a week's worth of reading. But Fear the Flames from what Jan has said is what she wanted fourth wing to be so it is the same vein as fourth wing but different I guess I did read the first four chapters and from just reading that I would have to agree that I like the writing in this better than I did in fourth wing which I only made about halfway through but I do plan on finishing fourth wing at some point but fear the flames is on my list the next book that I have is Ricochet, which is the second book in the Addicted Calloway series. I read Addicted to You in July, I think. I think I read it in the beginning of July or the end of June. I gave it six stars. It is one of my favorite books of the year. It is so good. It's actually one of my favorite books of all time, if I'm going to be really honest because the addiction rep in the in this book in these book series is 
so good so there are six books i'm actually making this into a vlog as well so i probably won't talk a lot about it i will give you a synopsis though of addicted to you because obviously this is the second book so i don't want to talk about it too much but this one does pick up where addicted to you ends like i think within like a couple of weeks um it's very quickly after the fact so actually maybe it's only a week after it might only be a week after so, but i don't remember so addicted to you is following ro or ro no lo and lily now technically lo's name is lauren but they call him Lo because that's what he prefers. So Lo and Lily, they have been best friends since childhood and they each have an addiction. Lo is an alcoholic and Lily is addicted to sex. So they have decided when they go to college that they are going to move in together so to hide so they can hide their addictions from their families. So the whole point of this is that this way they won't know now Lowe's father is also an alcoholic so he doesn't really pick up on anything but they mostly need to keep Lily's addiction under wraps now I will say that like Lily's family has figured out that Lowe is an alcoholic and so they've said things so it is to also to mo mo wow to mostly keep it from lily's family they pretend to be in a relationship so it's like there's like a fake dating trope in this um but of course the fake dating becomes something deeper than that because they are both in love with each other etc 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 also i will say that if addicted to you had ended in a different way i probably would not be raving about it as much as i am but the fact that the ending of this book was so realistic made me incredibly happy and that's why it's a six star book for me so that is that ricochet the next book that i will be reading is technically a book that i started in june or early july and then i set it down because first of all i don't want this world to end and we have to wait a little while for the third book but also i wasn't in a fantasy romance mood when i picked this up so i don't feel like it was fair of me to start this so i didn't finish it because i didn't want to give it a lower rating than the first one which was six stars for me um simply because i wasn't in the mood for it so i'm hoping to get to this one this month and that is woven by gold which is by elizabeth helen and is the second book in the beast of briar series so elizabeth helen is elizabeth and helen and they i believe are sisters and they wrote the first one which is bonded by thorns but this is a why choose beauty and the beast retelling there is um male male sex in this book or in the series so if you are not a fan of that i probably wouldn't recommend this to you but these covers are absolutely stunning and i literally want to own these physically so i will be buying them but they are chunky books they are very very chunky i forget how pretty col colored covers are because i read on my kindle so often and my kindle is black and white so sometimes i just have to appreciate how pretty covers are so yeah woven by gold is the next one the next book that i have is a nonfiction. i've been really 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 bad about reading nonfiction this year even though one of my goals for the year was to read at least one nonfiction book a month i have not done that so i need to get back to reading nonfiction. so this month i'm going to attempt to read why i'm no longer talking to white people about race i have had this on my kindle since 2020 i think like since after the george floyd things that happened there in the blm protests i did at one point start this book and then i set it down because i'm not really a nonfiction reader and I was like, I'm not going to read this. But I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the audiobook off of Libby. And I'm going to immerse and read this. Because there are things in here that I did start annotating um, on my Kindle. And I want to continue annotating. So that is my non-fiction. This is my non-fiction 
pick for the month. I also have um, another nonfiction book that I may pick up. But I'm not going to talk about it right now because I don't know yet if I'm going to pick it up. But this is the one that I really, really, really want to pick up. The next book that I have on my hopefuls list for this month, I'm not going to talk about for very long because I know that there are strong feelings about this book series and the author that wrote them. I want to preface this by saying that every year on July 31st, I restart this specific series in memory of my mom. So, this is a series that my mom and I started reading when it came out. She read the first three books to me, and then by the time that the fourth book came out, I was able to continue reading them on my own. Every year since all of the books in this series were published, my mom and I, starting on July 31st, would essentially buddy read before I knew what a buddy read was but we would reread re these books together no matter where the two of us lived. So the last time that my mom and I reread these books together was 2019. However we did not get to finish before she passed away unexpectedly in February of 2020. So I want to preface it by saying that that this book series for me lives on so that the good memories that my mom and I shared, which there were those, even though there were also not so good memories. This is one way for me to keep the good memories alive. I am not going to cry on here, but I do acknowledge the problematic things that are or could be depicted in this book series. I also am aware of why people have such an issue with the author as so do I. So with that being said, the next book on my hopefuls is Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. Like I said, my mom and I reread re these books every year up until 2019 when it went unfinished. I have actually not fully picked up this series again since she passed away. So this will be the first year that I start this on July 31st and read it all the way through until I finish all seven books. So I'm hoping to do one book a month, but we'll see how that goes. If you don't know what this series is about, this is a cho it's a chosen one trope. It is a young adult to adult fantasy. Basically, it progresses from young adult to adult and or middle grade to adult. Um, and it follows Harry Potter, the boy who lived, the boy with the lightning scar and his adventures at Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry with his two best friends, Hermione Granger and Ron Weasley. So, that's all I'm going to say about this series. I don't mention this author's name on my channel. You can read it here. And that's it. And finally, We have The Hunger Games. So I am going to be doing a vlog on this. I was going to start it in October, but I think I'm going to start it now. I don't know when it will go up, but the movie for The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes, which I read in 2020 and gave, or 2020 or 2021? One of those two years, whichever year it came out, I read it and I gave it five stars. I know that that book is pretty divisive on whether people like it or not, but I've decided that I want to reread the entire series, all three of the original books, plus The Ballad of Song Words and Snakes, before the new movie comes out in November so that I can watch it and review it and love it. And I cannot wait, you guys. I cannot wait. So that's what we're doing. I'm going to be rereading The Hunger Games. I don't know how much I will be talking about this book in vlogs like weekly vlogs and stuff simply because this is a book for me that is um going to be in a vlog so I absolutely love this cover it's absolutely stunning um and it's a special edition cover apparently so this is just the one that Amazon used but that is that book so those are the books that I have on my list as TBR hopefuls for the month of August. Let me know down below what you are hoping to read for the month of August 
and also if you've read any of the books what you think i should start with all of that and i will see y'all in the next one all of my links are down below as you know i don't know where this is going at this point it's very early in the morning <laughs> but if you don't know what to say go ahead and leave me a yellow heart emoji down below and thank you for watching and i will see y'all in the next one Goodbye.